everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. So I haven't got the product ready and done. I'm gonna be doing it all along with you in the video because parts of it I already know exactly what I'm doing and then there's parts of it that I'm not too sure and until I get to that point, I don't know what I'm gonna do. And I thought it'd be quite nice to show that process in the video. So today's tutorial is fully inspired by this beautiful collection by Dovecraft. This is Secret Garden. It's brand new and it is amazing. The accessories are just just so good. Now I've already been very fortunate to have been crafting with this. I've had it for a few, about six weeks now, but the products, or the projects I've made with the product are at Trimcraft HQ and they have been used for kind of promotional videos and they're over on their YouTube channel and you will see those, um, you know, as they come. So this is the Secret Garden and today's project is pretty much inspired even more so by these. And these are just the wooden, 10 wooden shapes and it's the little picket fence. And oh, they're just so cute. I mean, you guys will understand how we get excited over tiny little wooden fences, but they are just adorable. And it was these, I just wanted to create something where I got to keep it for myself, because I'm not giving this to anybody. Usually I give everything away, but this one I'm keeping for myself. And I wanted to create a little house or a hut with this picket fence all around it. So, that's how I got to doing this storage box. So I'm using papers from here. I've already pulled out this one here. And I'm also using this here, which is Craft Sensations, and this is Light Textures. And it's a really good paper pack, and it's just full of wood effects. Now this is great if you'd like to take photos of your cards as well. Um, I use this sometimes in my backgrounds, but it's really lovely. And there's this really nice one, even that would have worked as well, which I'll show you in a moment, which is gonna be the, the shed or the building that I'm making, the wooden building. So that is the other one. And this one was from the range and I will link in everything I'm using as always in my blog. Okay, so first of all, because I want this to be something that I'm gonna be keeping for a long time and it's gonna be more of a storage thing for me or it can be a very fancy gift box, but you can do this with cardstock, but I'm actually gonna be using chipboard. Now the chipboard I purchased from Every Crafts A Pound. I've shared that before in my What Did I Get videos. But this particular one here, that's all my card stock. This particular one is the one, two, it's two or three mil, but it's really strong. And I know a few of you have already commented and said how much you like the chipboard. So it is really, really good stuff. So you're gonna need, I haven't done the roof yet because I haven't got to that bit, but I know that this bit's gonna work. Now this, in the pack that I buy from um, Every Cross a Pound, you get four pieces of six by six. I think you get four of the A4 size and then you get two of the 12 by 12. So this was already cut, but this is one of their six by six pieces. So if you've got any chipboard, just have one piece that's six by six. Then you're gonna need four pieces that are five by five and a half. Okay, so I've already gone and cut them all down. And then when you are cutting, I use this trimmer here and I've got a spare um, my older blades, sorry, I put a black little marker on and I use them for cutting chipboard because they're perfect for cutting that. Okay, so don't throw those blades away, keep them to one side, but just put a little marker on them so you know. Okay, so those that's those pieces. And then to cover all of this, now I'm gonna be covering the inside as well. So if you don't wanna cover the inside, then you'll only need four pieces of the size I'm gonna give you, but I've got eight and these are the same size, five by five and a half. And I'm literally gonna be covering them front and back like so. So that when I look inside, it looks nice as well, but also, you know, yeah, just think it just gives it a nice finish. Um, so that's that. And then because this is all deconstructed, you're going to need four pieces that are one by five and a half. And along the one inch side, just grab my, Thing here you're going to score it half an inch so this actually the way I'm putting it together is very very similar to the gift box for the teacup and saucer that I made many 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 of you have done that so you will probably know straight away how we're going to do this so this is the same pattern obviously as this but the idea is so I'm going to be using hot glue, so you're probably going to see it, but by the time this gets added to the corners, not only does it blend right in, you get a perfect corner, but it hides any glue as well that we might have. I'm not worried about any glue that may come along the bottom because I'm going to be covering it in grass and flowers and lots of lovely stuff. I've got such a nice idea in my head. Okay, so I've just 
and gone and folded and burnished all of those pieces there for the corners. So now what I want to do, oh also you need a piece of 6x6 six six um, you know, paper to cover the base. Now I've got the green which is from the paper pack and it sits just over the top like that. By the time the house is in there and then I've got my little fence here, this is going to kind of look like the grass, the bottom of it. And I just think it's all going to look really nice, fingers crossed. So what you want to do is start sticking these pieces on. So I'm going to stick that piece onto my base, that's the 6x6 six six base. And then you've got four of these 5x5.5 five five sides. And depending on whatever paper you're using and whether you're sticking both front and back, you basically want to stick them down like so. Now if you're cutting windows and things like that, I'm going to cut mine after because I think it's easier, because I'm going to be using a cutting knife, it's easier to stick this down whole rather than having to measure where windows are and things like that. I'm going to cut into that. I'm not going to do too many either. So that's what I'm going to do. But if you would rather do it beforehand, then do so. But you basically want to stick them over there and then I've got the four to stick on the other side. So I'm going to go ahead and get all of that done first. Okay, so I've gone ahead and covered everything. Double-sided, looks really good. They look like tiles now actually. And then I've also decorated the bottom there so that's all ready to go. If you want to do the underside, you can. Um, I may well distress mine as well. So I've just got the brushed corduroy and the frayed burlap there. So I might use those. And then what I've decided to do is I'm only going to do windows on two sides. The door, I think I'm just going to stick down. Because I'm keeping mine more for storage, I don't want to have too many gaps and things obviously fall out. But if you want to have an actual door that opens, then and you still want to use it as a gift box or something, put some acetate behind the door. And that way people can kind of see in, maybe see the tissue paper or whatever it is you're doing, um, but obviously things won't fall out. Now, I was feel I had stopped recording and was chatting away and showing how I'd done this and then realised I hadn't hit record. But basically what you want to do is this is a square die and it is one and seven eighths of an inch squared, so I guess two inch squared would be fine. And I just popped it over the top, so imagine get the right piece now, it's like a jigsaw puzzle, there we go. So imagine that's all there, pop that over the top and then I got a pencil, draw around the inside and then with my metal ruler and my cutting knife you want to just go around and cut it. Now what I found best to do is if you hold your ruler down and just kind of work it a little bit first of all with your knife, once you've got it there then go in without the knife, the ruler, keep your hand away, obviously I don't want anybody cutting themselves and keep working it until you go all the way through and that way you can make sure you get them nice like lined up point to point and you want to do that. Once you've done one then you just need to sit it, so say that's this is the one you've done, sit it over top of your, over the top of your next one and then just draw around it that way and you know you've got them all lined up. So what I plan to do with mine is I'm going to back it with acetate and I may put some little curtains there as well and then I'm going to make a frame here with maybe a little windowsill to put plant pots on and things like that but once we get to all the decoration I will go through that in more detail. Okay, so I've got two pieces of acetate here. This is two and a quarter by two and a quarter and it sits over there. It's got about a quarter of an inch overhanging. Okay, so whatever size your window is, just make sure your acetate overhangs. And then I'm gonna add some of my thin tape. Obviously you don't want, you wanna make sure your tape isn't gonna go into your window section that people are gonna see. So I'm just gonna pop some tape around the outer side on all four sides on both pieces. Okay so with the inside of your piece here you then want to, I've taken all the backing off and you just want to stick that down just making sure that none of the sticky tapes obviously going to show through. It's nice and even. I'm just going to make sure that's all, got all the air bubbles out there. And then if I turn it over, we've now got a nice little window there ready to obviously add more to and I'll frame this and all that, but that will be done once we do all the decorations. So I've done that on. Flip it over and now you've got a nice window. So they're ready to go on either side. So I've had my heat gun warming up and next we want to start piecing this together. So you're going to stick them first, then we'll add these bits after and then we'll stick it onto this. I think that's going to be the easiest way to do it. So I'm going to start with a front and a side. Obviously if you want to cut the door or anything else you want to do, even decoration, if you, if you think you might find it easier to do it all separately then fine, but I want to put mine all together because I like to see it all made up before I then go to decorate so I can make sure you know proportions and all that lot are correct. Now because this is a thick chipboard, 
Obviously if you stick it like on the front there and stick this side piece inside rather than outside. So you see the difference you get inside or out. I am going to do it so they're both on the inside. So that way, although you're going to be putting the hinges on it won't really matter. Um, but I just, yeah, I think I prefer to do it that way. So let's have a go anyway. I'm just going to run some hot glue. And obviously you need to act pretty quick because you're using obviously the hot glue. If you're not, then you'll have a, so you won't need to be as fast, but I'm just going to stick that all over. Like I said, it doesn't matter if the glue's oozing out because you're going to be covering this corner. So hold that there for a second. That's already pretty strong. Yeah, I like that. And then you can see there, once you pop that on the corner, that completely disappears and completely blends in. You wouldn't even know. So you get a really lovely finish as well. So I'm going to do my next side piece and work my way back. So then I want to do this one here. I'm going to hold it up this way now. And again, sit that right behind okay so now you can see a little bit wet there get rid of that so that's going to be the front which looks bizarre because there's no door and then i've got my windows either side so now hmm, so now i've got to do both at the same time so i'm going to have to be make sure i've got another glue stick handy oh i think i held my breath there just to make sure i got that all stuck down in one go so now i've got a really nice cube get rid of all my glue strings that are forming there we go yeah i'm happy with that so now i'm going to stick down all of these pieces here and straight away that just instantly transforms it i'm really pleased with that if you've got any lumpy bits of glue that what i would say because i can feel a couple there that are just going to come through just very carefully with my knife so make sure you cut away from yourself just kind of get rid of those lumpy bits like so, and I'm just going to use some glue here. And again, you know, I would say when you're sticking this down, if for some reason it's a little bit short or you're a little bit out, so make sure you get it more towards the top because the bottom you can cover with plant pots, with trees, with you know, planter pots, with all your accessories, so it won't matter. So, there we go. How cool does that look? So I'm going to go around now and stick all of my hinges onto all of the corners. Okay, so there is my base. Very, very strong. That's going to be such a nice storage. I've got, I think I'm going to put my, um, all my light sewing um, threads and things in here. That's maybe one thing. Um, but anyway, we'll get to that when, I, when it's finished. So next, you want to run hot glue all around here and get that stuck down. So I need to put another glue stick in although I'm all right for a minute. So now I've got to do four sides, this is gonna be quick. Right, let's go, go, go. Okay, done it. Whew, again, you would have seen me there, I was going so fast, but now that's stuck down. So I've gone smaller at the back, so there's not so much there, because I won't be doing anything on the back. And then on the front, I've got the wider section, although now I've got the word tarragon upside down, but I'm not too worried because again that's all going to get covered up with stuff and even by the time that's there and then I've got stuff on top there's going to be flowers covering all of that you're only really going to see a little bit of the colour of this base anyway so yeah so that's where you need to be at this stage okay have that all stuck down okay so next we need to make the roof so this is going to be the lid and it's going to just sit over the top so how I think this is going to work, you're going to need two pieces that are six by three and a half. So they're actually going to be the roof, okay, like so. And then you need two pieces that are two by six. And we're going to make this shape and they will be the front and the back. Actually, mine's going to be that way. So, yep, it all still will work. Fingers crossed this is all going to go. Again, this is how I work before I go and uh, share my tutorials because like I said, I always have one beforehand. So along the six inch side, you want to mark halfway. So three inches, so just put a pencil mark. And then you just want to join up each bottom corner to that pencil line in the middle just to form that triangle shape. Once you've cut one, 
So like this one, I would just sit it over here and trace around it. But just to show you how you do it, and then again, just to show you how this does cut, line up that point there, and then this pencil mark, middle part there, in the track of your trimmer, sit it down. On this particular Fiskars one, you have the wire running through. Just make sure that wire runs through, and then it should just break off like so. If not, flip it over and cut it again. But I'm just going to just help that last bit. It's only a little bit that was still attached. And then again, do the same. Okay, so now I'm gonna decorate mine. I need to go and look at what kind of wood effect I wanna use for the roof, but you'll need to cut your roof. You'll need to cut the pattern paper the same size as these. Again, you'll need two, because I'm gonna do the inside as well because it's a lid so it just looks nice when you lift it up if someone looks underneath. You need two pieces of that rectangle size, so two by six, and then cut your pattern paper exactly the same way that we just cut them. Again, you'll need four pieces because you'll want to decorate the front and the back. Get them all stuck down just like you did with this and then we'll start putting that together. Okay, so I've got everything cut and it's all been covered and it all looks really good. So I think I've worked out how I'm gonna do this. So the easiest way that I think is, first of all, you want to stick these onto here. Now, what you want to do is make sure when you stick it down, your the, the top of the roof needs to be like that, okay? Not like that. Hang on a minute. Let's get rid of that bit. Right. The top of the roof, you don't want it to be like that or like that. You want it to be like this okay so it's like a hinge see there so it's just slightly going to be attached but the main part is going to be stuck to is this piece here now you also want to bring it down slightly so I'm going to come in by about it's not quite it's about yeah it is a quarter of an inch that's where you want to stick in so we do one side first so we're going to stick this so that it sits right up to the top here but in by a quarter of an inch okay if you've got a little bit overhanging there then I would say before you stick it down trim it because what you don't want is that hanging let me just check that mine's not going to hang on both sides because it shouldn't have yeah see the other side's okay so you just might have to trim that slightly but by the time you decorate again it's not going to worry you know it's not going to be a problem so let's just get this stuck down so I can see how the rest is going to come together so I'm going to run some hot glue all the way down one side. Again once we come to decorate more this will all get disguised. So I'm going to come in, make sure it's right at the top there, but come in about a quarter of an inch. I'm going to sit that down now and just, key is keeping it all straight. And what you can do again, careful with your fingers, if you've got any of these little finger things here, these are handy, because what you can do is just rub them along, but I'm going to go in with my finger here, like so. You can just remove any, if you have got any larger bits that you really don't want of glue, like that bit there, just to get rid of. Okay, so there is one side done. Next, we can stick this one. And you want to make sure the top, remember, is going to go like that. You want that gap here. See it all the way running down? That's what you want. Okay, and then when I stick that one down, if you, as long as you line up these two long pieces, you'll know that you'll get it the same depth, that quarter of an inch. The only reason I've done that is because I just think it gives it a little bit of character rather than it being flush with the very edge. So again, I'm just going to run hot glue all down there. But I'm not going to run any hot glue along this piece because we're going to cover it with a hinge piece like that we did on the sides there. So again, I think I've factored everything in. It's just getting it all done at the right stages. So there you can see I've got it lined up everywhere. I mean, this is proper DIY. This is the stuff I really love. So you can see now I've got a nice even little overhang there. Okay, now just test it. I'm actually really pleased with how that's come together because the whole idea is, is that it sits over the box, which it is doing. Um, and that's gonna form a really nice little lid. I'm really pleased with that, she says before we stick on this end bit. But if you grab that piece now and just bring it to the other end, you want it to be, you want this piece to lie. So sit your, this on nice and straight. Then this piece 
you want to lie down and then bring it right up to the top of this just like we would with the other one you want it to be flush with the back of this box not really don't push it but just to be flush with it and just check everything lines up which it does and again you're just going to come in about a quarter of an inch you might want to mark a pencil mark underneath the bit here this kind of flat piece just mark a pencil mark where this bit here actually sits but I can see mine so I know where I need to stick mine but it should should work we'll soon find out so with this piece you need to glue both at the same time now so I'm gonna run a bead of glue all up there and then I know that I just need and this is the back so I'm not too too worried that it might not look perfect but I think that looks okay make sure you do have a pencil because what you don't want to happen now is you go to put this on and it ain't going to fit because you've brought this in too far in this way so you know again if you're worried with that then stick it closer to the outer end here and that way you know your lid will go on I mean if it's a little bit looser that's not the end of the world okay I'm just gonna let that set a bit but I think yay oh, that fits really nice again it's gonna fall off because it's not like that kind of way but look how cool <laughs> oh I love it guys I think it's so sweet what a sweet little she shed <gasps> love it this is what I want one day I want a she shed with radiator and air conditioning and a fridge and everything really nice <laughs> okay right now I'm gonna make this hinge piece so you want a piece that is six by I think one inch is going to work again the same size that we used for the corners so the idea is that that is going to go over like that okay so yeah six inches by one score at, score at half an inch and stick that over there okay so I started doing stuff and then realized that I hadn't hit record but it's okay because I'm actually going to make a few changes so the one thing I went ahead and done is I've cut myself four pieces of three and five eighths by half an inch and I've just stuck them on the edge here and it gives you this little lip and I just thought it was a nice little touch um, and again just made it look a bit more authentic so I've just stuck it to the the width of the chipboard so I've just ran glue along that piece there and then just stuck it so that whole piece is hanging you can see I've just done that at both ends I'm going to be adding something here and also having things like maybe dangling down so yeah if you can do that bit and then I went ahead and stuck down my picket fence and I love 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 it it doesn't go all the way around but I'm not bothered about that because this is how it's going to be facing obviously this way and um, all the glue and everything is all going to get covered but I think they look fab now I also went and done my window frames but then I thought they look too light they just don't look right so I went and started playing around and done my door so this is going to go in here and you've got to imagine we're going to be doing obviously a lot more to this that is going to go there I think it's going to look great and because I've done this dark brown I then thought I'm going to go over and I'm just going to stick over this I'm not going to take it off now if you want to know how I've done this basically this is a embossing folder that comes with issue 173 of Papercraft Essentials now I don't know if this issue will be still in the shops by the time the video goes out but you can buy back copies of this still so I will share all the links and you should still be able to get a hold of it so although this is a large um, embossing folder all I done is cut a piece of cardstock that was two and a half by four and a half and popped it inside here so that it was over this side here had an even top and bottom there and you can see I just get a little bit of the hinges the metal hinges and then run that through my embossing folder and you just still get a really nice effect I know it's kind of gone off the edges here and you don't get all this kind of you know detail but I don't think it matters I thought it worked out really really well so I mean I maybe I could have gone across that one there and then I would have had but I still wouldn't have had it all in because it's quite a long piece but if you're making a bigger one then obviously you've got that but yeah it looks really good and I'm actually going to be using one of the stamps from this as well because it works really well with this collection so and then I just popped this darker brown piece which is 
two and five eighths by four and five eighths. So it's literally just over, but because I've got that dark brown, I thought I'd use that then to do my window frames. So you're going to need six pieces that are a quarter of an inch by two and a quarter, and then you want two pieces that are half an inch by two and a half. And what we're going to do is we're going to stick two down on the side, like so, one across the top, like that, and then your actual windowsill is going to go along there. I might have to peel my grey one off underneath, you might not even notice it, but that will give me my frame. And I'm going to have little plant pots on here and everything as well, so again, it's all going to kind of start to, fingers crossed, work. <laughs> It should uh, all work out in the end. So I'm just going to pop some glue on here, stick those down first. What I'm going to do is actually, I'm going to make mine a little bit longer. That will be the right length for you, because you can see there you just get a nice little piece overhanging. But I'm going to do mine a little bit longer just because I want to cover that grey underneath. And I think I've got just enough scrap left to do so. Okay, so mine's got a slightly larger one, but it still looks okay. And uh, yeah, all coming together. And again, now if I put that there, it starts to tie in everything really nicely. So I'm just gonna do the same on this one here. Okay, next I'm gonna stick this down. I'm trying to think which way would I open the door. I would open it that way out, although it's not gonna really open, but that's the way I would do it. So I'm gonna stick that down because everything else is gonna be in front of the door. I also distressed the door as well. You can see there on all the raised parts, that's where I use the frayed burlap. So just literally just brushed over it and you can add to it as well to get a deeper color. Okay, so that is everything in terms of measurements that I need to give you. Everything else now, for, you know, going forward is decoration and it's entirely up to you. And this is for me the best part. Um, I can't wait to see how other people do theirs because I know there's gonna be a few of you that are gonna really enjoy this. Okay, so I've gone and started preparing some bits and pieces but until I start actually putting it on there I don't really know what more stuff I'm going to need but I have gone um, using the stamp set that also comes free with that same magazine is this one here which is Garden Delights and the lovely thing about this is you get this little plaque and you can stamp in whatever you want so I've put in craft shed so I've gone ahead and stamped it and then I've just distressed it with the frayed burlap distressed ink and that is going to hang for example on the door there I think that looks really cute. Then I've just got some brads here because I want to decide which one I'm going to have as the doorknob for the door. Um, I've pulled out little flowers because I want to use some of these buds and I want to make little like bouquets. Um, I've got the bunt in there. I've got the trowel and the fork which is going to hang in the window. I've die cut the small watering can which I can't pick up in silver there which is also free that's this one here and that will sit nicely somewhere I've die cut one of the plant pots but I want to see how it looks first I've got these little butterflies in the sticker book and I'm going to have them kind of just you know dotted around on the house it's like little butterflies have laid on the house I've got the flower soft which I need to lay down really to see how everything is and then I have a pair of red paint and welly boots so I wanted to incorporate that somewhere in this so I die cut the welly boots from the die set here so this one here there's the trowel um, sorry the trowel and the fork that's the little plot pot um, I'm going to die cut that at some point as well but then I just went over them with some glossy accents to give it that patent look or at least a shiny look so that's just drying it's got a little bit left there to dry but they're going to be kind of you know along the fence there, kind of leaning up against it as well okay so I'm just going to show you what I have been up to and what I've done so far I'm really really pleased with it and it's coming together really nicely so I'm almost finished but oh, there's a couple of little bits that I want to show you how to do as well so starting around the side here so you would have seen in the video that I done these little um, the fork and the trowel and then I just used some brads which I cut and just pop them there to look like they're like little hooks or nails or something um, then I've added those flowers and I've just gone ahead and die cut all these little leaves here and obviously the picket fence there and I've done all of that flower soft around the side which just looks brilliant really pleased with that and then along the front here which is of course the best part in my eyes. Um, I've popped a couple of little flowers here, die cut the watering can, which I'll show you, 
These are just little flowers that I have hanging around and they're just little wired buds but I've made it look like a little rose bush coming up but I may add some also some more green kind of leaves there. A couple of my little acetate butterflies, these are the tiny tiny ones but I thought they worked really well on here. Got my craft shed sign. I've done a little leaf here for the doorknob which was a brad but again I've just cut off the split pin part. Already spoke about the door. I fussy cut a um, fork here from, from the um, paper pack. Um, my welly boots, which look great now, really like them, and they've got a lovely shine to them, if you can see there. There we go. I think they look awesome. Some more lovely buds there, and then I'm going to add some plant pots, which I'm going to show you in a minute, because I like what I've done with that. And then on the side here, I've got some more roses with some more flowers. I've got a spade down there, and then I've got this like little rake there as well which has been fussy cut. That one's actually come from the Gardenia collection so I thought that worked. I've tied that in and then I've just carried around the flower soft around the back there. The back's really plain. I've not done anything to it because you're never going to see that but I wanted to show you just how to do the little plant pots. So I've die cut these ones here and these come from this stamps um, die set. So that's the fork, the fork and the trowel, there's the welly boots I used, this is the leaf that I've used and then this is the um, flower pot that I'm showing you now. Now I've cut off the little label because I didn't you know need to have that and then I've distressed them with the frayed burlap there. So this is what I've got. Now I'm going to do, I'm going to die cut some more and have them kind of stacked on top of each other like something like that and I'm going to have that stuck along the side but on the front here what I wanted to show you is I have these here which start off looking like that and I pick them up from the works they're just these little kind of sprigs pulled them all apart and I just wanted this one here and basically I'm going to stick them behind and you instantly have a really cute little flower pot and flowers. And this would look lovely on cards as well. But I'm just going to use some of my, I'm going to use the Aline's Tacky Glue because it's nice and thick. So I'm just going to pop a splodge behind there. And because these are fabric, it's just string, it's really soft. So I'm just going to lie that down on the back. Obviously making sure everything's concealed. Just kind of hold that there in place for a moment. Now you can see that's all stuck down. If I flip it over, how sweet is that? And then I'm going to use a little bit of my Pin Flare gel glue just to give a bit of dimension. You can get it from the hot glue as well, but I don't want it obviously oozing out. So I'm just going to pop a splodge on the back there. Get that dry bit off. I don't want that. And then I'm going to have it just here. And once that gel dries, it dries really hard. What I've also done is I've gone along um, the flower soft and just covered it in glue, which is just setting now, it's starting to dry clear, and that will just stop any of it falling off. Um, but it's not really dropping too much now. So I'm gonna do my little plant pots upside down. Um, I've got little bits here, I've got like a little teacup and saucer. I was thinking about maybe having it sat on the floor there, because um, I thought that was quite a nice little touch. Okay guys, so there is the finished gift box, storage box, and I adore it. I think it's just so cute, really sweet, and um, yeah, it's going to look nice in my craft room. So I've just gone and popped some die cut um, kind of leaves here to look like a plant crawling up the side, which I thought was nice. Then I have added some more here as well. You saw that plant pot, and then on this side I've done those two there. And I've added this garden sticker, which is also from the collection. And I've added the lovely little cute uh, china teacup and saucer there at the bottom. So someone's having a little break from their gardening. And then on the front, I'm really kind of unsure still whether to keep this here or not. So I've got number two lavender, which is fussy cut from one of the papers. It's only on with the glue dot, so I can take it away. But I don't know whether to have it with or without, because I think it just, it looks lovely either way. So there it is with it on. I'm going to leave it there for the minute. But pop in the comments whether you think with or without. There you go. Really don't know. Anyway, so that's it all finished. And um, I can't wait to make this again because I am thinking about doing a Santa's workshop. I think that would look adorable. So slightly different shape to it. I've already got an idea in my head. But um, let me know what you think about that because I think that could be really nice. How, how special would that be as a Christmas gift box Santa's workshop? Um, yeah, I think it would look great. So anyway, that's my idea. 
and something to come but yeah I hope you've enjoyed it I've loved making this and I'll be back again soon with another tutorial thanks for watching bye